So Steve, thanks for being with me today. Um, to start off with, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do at Catalent? Yeah, so hi, I'm Stephen Tyndall. I'm Director of First Scientific Advisory, which is a, um, a corporate R&D role is probably the best way to think about it. I help uh, customers, particularly in early development, with dev uh, selection of the right technology to support the transition of drug substance to drug product for oral small molecule delivery. That's a bit of a mouthful. Another way of thinking about what I do is a kind of triage, um, technology triage. So I'm agnostic to technology. Uh, I do what's right for the molecule rather than uh, uh, what's right for any individual. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thanks very much. Um, so looking to trends, what are the top three trends that you're seeing in the small molecule side um, today? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're monitoring the space all the time. We see a lot of molecules, although we don't own any. We see a lot coming through our um, organization and a lot of what we learn is unpublished. So a lot of unpublished studies. Uh, we're really, really interested. A lot of people think of Catlin as um, having a lot of technologies for poorly soluble, bioavailable challenge molecules. So we're really interested in the beyond rule of five space. You know, since Lipinski's rules came out, there's, there's not really any guidance for beyond rule of five. So we're looking at that space, characterizing these difficult molecules. Uh, coming out of that discussion, um, we started looking at these bifunctional protein degraders that have got very, very large now, small molecules, uh, and they're difficult in terms of solubility and permeability. So uh, we put together a package we call ProtoSuite uh, to help customers evaluate the challenges that a, a bifunctional protein degrader would give in terms of um, oral delivery. Um, in addition to those, uh, we're always on the lookout for enhancements in lipid-based drug delivery. Uh, this is a complex area, uh, and although we believe lipids have a role to play, uh, we're looking to advance the way that we characterize lipid formulations in order to maximize their utilization. Uh, since spray drying came out, everybody goes to spray drying as their first, which is great, and we love spray drying, but there are some specific applications where lipid formulations can help, particularly uh, to overcome some of the limitations that you might have in biological barriers, overcoming efflux, first pass loss, those kind of things. Lipid formulations can do that a little better than some of the spray dry dispersions. So that's, that's what's keeping me uh, energized at the moment. Oh, fantastic. Um, and just picking up on what you said about lipid formulations, can you just elaborate a little bit on the benefits of those? Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 main, the main reason people think about lipid formulations, there's two main reasons. One their molecule is not soluble in water, but might be soluble in more oily substances. So if you can dissolve a drug in these lipid formulations, you're presenting the drug in a, in a solution formulation and not as a crystalline drug. So you can get faster uh, solubility in the stomach. The, the second thing is your body is designed to digest grams and grams of lipids. So you have all these mechanisms in place to absorb these lipids. And so if you can use a lipid-based formulation, uh, you can take advantage of what this is kind of like, you can reproduce the food effect and enhance bioavailability. Fantastic. Um, and sticking on the lipid side, um, what are some of the formulation challenges for lipids? Yeah, the, 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 the only issue with uh, lipid formulations is there's a lot of excipients, there's a lot of complexity. So that brings a lot of opportunity, but it means that you have to have a lot of uh, expertise in lipid formulation. So it's something like, you know, if you only come in and out of it, if you only have a project every three or five years, you know, you might not build that lipid expertise. Whereas within Catalan, mm -hmm. we, we're developing lipid formulations all the time. So we're keeping that lipid expertise in place. So, um, you know, lipid formulations come with complexity that provides opportunity probably the best way to think about it. Fantastic. Well, lipids is, sounds like that's one of the things you're working on, but what would you say is the most interesting thing that you're working on today, Steve? The most, interest, the, the most interesting thing we're working on right now is this beyond rule of five space, you know, okay. how to characterize poorly soluble molecules using these tools like uh, ProtoSuite. So we're thinking of a three-step process. We, we do material characterization to, to characterize an API. Uh, and then we do with PVPK modeling. So we characterize the bioavailability challenges. And when we put those two pieces together, we have a problem statement that formulation has to resolve. So what is the problem that you're asking the formulator mm -hmm. to fix? Most people think about solubility, but it could be short half-life, uh, efflux, first pass loss, uh, route of delivery even. And when we've got all that information together, we have a problem statement for the formulator to, to go and fix that. Um, and we, we're bundling all that in something we're calling the developability assessment. 
Okay. So, uh, you know, it's more it's more scientific and targeted than just you know trying what you tried last time. Okay, fantastic. And what do you see as the main benefits for that? Yeah. So so uh, a lot of a lot of there's a lot of expertise in yeah. the industry. Uh, in smaller and smaller companies, it gets very, very difficult to have all of these disciplines yeah. in a small company. So, you know, if you have that expertise in your partner organizations, you can enhance the science in your team in order to make sure this goes right first time. Uh, and a lot of a lot of times these days, what we're seeing is there's a, there seems to be a trend that more and more companies don't have formulation expertise, especially for enabling technology in their organization. So, like, you know, There'll, there'll be someone who might be a medicinal chemist, you know, a bright person who's like the API guys responsible for the drug product development as well. And, you know, they're intelligent people, but they're not formulators. So, you know, they can enhance the skills in their team by partnering with people who have their expertise. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm going to change tack a bit. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about regulation. So what are the main regulatory challenges um, affecting the sector today? Yeah, uh, the challenge I see at the moment, uh, particularly from the MHRA, is the interpretation of the regulations and, and where you can expedite. And so, like, uh, I've got, I, I think there's good news that the MHRA uh, is now claiming, uh, they're now saying that they are, you know, they don't have a backlog anymore. They were working against a bit of backlog. They have an influx of new people. So one of the issues we're seeing uh, is, uh, you know, the opinion that we're getting on the regulatory space is coming from a new set of people. So it can be a little bit, if you've been working with them in the past, the, the opinion you're getting in the future might be slightly different. And that, that, that can be a little bit difficult. So you, it's important for customers to have that meeting with the regulatory people to be prepared in advance for what's going to be needed. Okay, um, fantastic. Um, and looking in terms to the future, in terms of like innovations, I mean, yep. what do you think is the most significant innovation that will impact the industry in the next, say, three to five years? Yeah, uh, I've thought long and hard about this, but yeah. I think I'm going to say artificial intelligence um, and not because it necessarily has the solution today, but I think it will consume a lot of people and a lot of time uh, trying to implement artificial intelligence. Um, you know, only time will tell where artificial intelligence will have the best benefit. But I think that innovation will occupy a lot of people in a lot of time because they see the potential to reduce the amount of effort that's done. Now, um, what, what, in order for artificial intelligence to be successful, you will need good quality data in order to feed the artificial intelligence machine to get a good result. And I think that is actually a good thing for Catalan because uh, we, we use science-based tools to, to develop and that is the kind of information that you should be able to feed artificial intelligence. So uh, I think a lot of people will be working in artificial intelligence, but they will need good quality data. That excites me because that's my job. Fantastic. Um, what do you, can I ask, what are you doing at the moment at Catalan in artificial intelligence? Have you got any um, insights and projects that you can share or? Um, uh, today, not very much. We think about it in my mm -hmm. team, we think about uh, we, when we're doing PVPK modeling, for example, uh, what we find is the, uh, the software that we use was trained with small molecules mm -hmm. and molecules that come out that are slightly different from that. The computer is not exactly brilliant at nailing the performance of those. So we call it physiologically based pharmacokinetic modeling. We're doing for it as an example where we're using physiological data to train the computer. That is not my opinion. That is not artificial intelligence. So. Um, we are not yet jumping into artificial intelligence. We're watching the space. Um, in order to train the database, you need a lot of data. And the issue that Catlin has is all of that data belongs to customers. Mm -hmm. So we can't, we can't use their data to train an artificial intelligence database. So we're watching and waiting. Okay. Well, fantastic. Well, it sounds exciting. So thanks yeah, very it much. Is. It's a really interesting <laughs> area.